Hey, listen, I, I quit. Yeah, I'm going in the stocks. Name of the game. Move the money from your client's pocket into your pocket. But if you can make your client's money at the same time, it's advantageous to everyone, correct? No. No one is paying attention. It's unbelievable. You have to act now. God, this is intimate. I feel like I'm financially inside of you or something. Okay. I have five houses. And a condo. I'm considering going long on April week. What do you think, Valentine? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so hi guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. So, awesome stuff, good to see you all back here. Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, and this is the first time you are seeing what I'm doing, I am going to totally blow your mind. Now, I'm not bragging here, right? I'm saying this because I know that a lot of the videos you've been watching have been totally filling you with a lot of BS, basically. Now today we want to talk about swing trading, right? Now you hear a lot about people saying I swing trade, this is how to swing trade, blah, blah, blah. Now for those of you who don't know, this channel does a lot of stuff around market profile. Um, and that's because I believe that you can see the most information using a market profile time price opportunity chart so if you've never seen this before it's what professionals tend to use largely in the futures market it originated inside of the Chicago Board of Trade um, it was developed by a well-known futures trader on the exchange called Pierre Stuhlmeier right uh, alongside his um, compatriot I should say um, that brought it a lot more to the public light and that would be um, Jim Dalton and um, Stephen Hawkins so it is not something that has been made up that's why you that's why all of the influencers you watch you see those videos you've just been clicking on and watching all of those guys don't talk about it they don't know about it it's because they have no clue right and no offense to anyone it's just that we know they have no clue and what they tend to have is a lot of followers and we all know right the YouTube algorithm does promote people who are excitable and are prone to spreading a lot of BS and those people are gonna get more clicks and more views ultimately they're gonna be more popular via the YouTube algorithm fantastic but for you you're not gonna learn a thing right and you're gonna be asking yourself day to day why it's not working for you why you, it just seems like you've been whipped around the park right so I'm gonna use this video to explain now I know you're looking at a TPO chart and I know you guys still despite what I would say you still want to spend the time around candlestick charts and I'm totally fine with that right if that's the way you want to swing then I'm totally fine with it but that said I'm gonna be able to show you on a candlestick chart as well what that looks like and for those of you who really want to learn you can stick around and then I'll show you what that looks like on a time price opportunity chart. and I also know a lot of you guys like trading Forex so I'm actually gonna do this um, on a Forex chart right just so you understand the concept of swing trading and how you actually do it as opposed to what they will tell you to do and the things you look for I'm gonna to talk to you I'm, I'm gonna literally spell it out here and you know for those of you who don't know me and haven't been following me on this channel if you go to my mentorship program which is free right here on YouTube you can see that I put my performance on there so you can see that I know what I'm talking about a lot of these talking heads they're not going to do that but that's for another day All right so moving on so I'm just gonna pop up uh, my candlestick chart here and by the way guys it doesn't matter whether you, you're trading stocks you're trading crude oil you're trading cable it really does not matter the rules are exactly the same when it comes to swing trading all right so let's define swing trading so I'm just gonna pop up a as I said you guys love Forex so I'm gonna do this on Forex uh, so everyone can see right so let's walk this back now I like to work off 
the weekly time frames as my as my go-to macro frame right that's where I get to see the big picture so I like to work off that and I know for those of you who don't understand how markets work are gonna think a weekly time frame is too big a time frame but I can assure you it is not <laughs> it's just because you don't understand how the markets work you don't understand the concept of volatility that's why you think a weekly chart is too long a time frame but if you understand the 80 20 principle which means that 80% of the move is going to be in 20% of the price action which means a weekly chart matters but that's for another day all right so let's talk about swing trading now swing trading quite simply is that you are trying to swing from tops and bottoms and what do I mean by that you're basically trying to hunt stops right or you're trying to find liquidity right which is the term that you'd hear thrown about a lot is that you're trying to find liquidity at the extremes right and this is also where market profile comes in and I'm gonna show you guys as we um, go further in the video right so let's let's grind it down now into some talk like some technical some meat how you would actually trade this Right, and you can already see I've got some annotations on my chart but this is I put these on here for the mentorship program but I'm gonna delete these now because I'm, I don't wanna I wanna take you guys off, off track All right so let's take this back so let's say that you are a swing trader right so you're looking for trades that are really really long term All right some people would describe that as a position trader right so you're holding trades for a year two years that's like more like a position trade but let's say you are a swing trader where you're looking to hold positions for let's say a week or two, right? I know a lot of people won't do that or won't have the patience to do that, but making the assumption here that you do this, right? That's what you're planning to do. So let's now take a look at some potential examples. So I'm gonna take you guys all the way back to COVID. So you'll remember COVID. All right now, one of the concepts you're gonna to have to bear in mind is liquidity concepts, right? So in other words, where are stops placed i.e where can we find the most stops clustered and what tends to happen there when those stops cluster there in fact even why do those stops cluster there now i have a mentorship program that discusses all of this but for the interest of some of you are coming to the channel for the first time and you're happening on this video then i'm going to explain this right so let's say you are a so i'm going to take you back to covid right so let's say that you are a seller right you are the guy who wants to get short the market all the fracas has happened and the covid plays going on and everyone wants to be short now the earliest shorts they're going to be selling here they're going to have their stops here right and because they're short those stops are going to be what we call buy stops right they're going to be up here those are the earliest sellers right and they're going to trail those stops as we go and then we're also going to have breakout traders right those breakout traders they're going to have their buy orders right so those are their buy stop orders are going to sit there so as opposed to buy stop loss orders which are going to be for the guys who are short you're going to have buy stop orders sitting up here right now all of these are buy orders so that's liquidity so that's liquidity for buyers right so they're all going to sit up here now let's say breakout traders who are breaking out short are going to sit to break out their short here about sort of 119.18 right so again that's where they're going to have like sell stops right now people who are late shorts might have for example if you're really really late to short then you're practically in trouble but you're probably going to put stops all the way along the board but the most stops are going to cluster here and they're going to be sell stops because again anyone who's intending to get long no matter where they want to get long are going to look to put stops either at the lows here or somewhere within this window right so there's going to be a lot of sell stops here so that's you know seller liquidity so if i'm a big trader right, and i need a lot of liquidity and i want to be long where do you think i'm going to get it from I'm gonna get it from the sellers right because they're the ones who want to sell to me so their orders are all they want to sell to me at the offer and I want to buy from them right so and I want to buy at the offer right 
so that's just how the business is so those sell sellers right they're either gonna go sell at the bid right and that allows my limit order and there's a, and that's why we call it liquidity is because when you put in a central order book when you put an order in you're adding liquidity to the market by adding another order in which acts as liquidity for whoever wants to hit that order so if, if you wanted to set a buy limit in the market that buy limit will be set in the market so that anyone who now wants to sell to you at that buy limit bid price can just come down and sell to you the price you're asking so you're always separated of course by bid ask right so those who are asking for you to pay a certain amount and those who are like yourself who are asking others to buy from you at a certain amount right so that's what kind of separates things so the liquidity is going to be at the extremes <laughs> that's the bottom line right so if we know that right and that's how you're going to get better at what you do is if we know that then it means that as the market trades into these levels and takes that liquidity that's down here then providing there's sufficient liquidity right and the buyers all step in and they eat up all the sales then we should start to um, offer higher right so the algorithm should start to mark prices up higher because it can do that so now it can basically take all the other buy orders all the way up to the most inefficient prices right so to so basically the worst prices right which allows the early buyers to be able to sell to those who want to buy at the worst prices so the market is designed to make the most people lose money right? that's just how it works and there's no other way it can work is if if I've pretty much if I always want to buy at the best possible price and sell at the worst then there has to be people who want to buy so the, the system has to be designed in a way that will always make people pay the worst possible price right so there's a value perception problem so swing trading is when we try and take advantage of this market anomaly so as the market comes down here right and we are thinking there's so many people going short and we can see the buy side reaction come back within what I would like to call the value area where the fairest prices are then we want to get long at the bottom of value which is as a market profile trader we will call that value low and you would see what that looks like on a market profile chart All right so there, so we want to be getting long about 12067 and we want to be selling back into liquidity All right so until we trade up the highs right we always want to be holding on to that position so that we can sell at the best possible price to those who want you know to buy that now look what happens as the market starts to trade back into those liquidity highs right right so we can see there was a high here and a low here so we took liquidity here we initially we took it here and then we took it here and then we went back and took it there and dipped a little bit right and some of you be asking the question well why didn't we take liquidity down well we know markets don't work that way but there was also reasonable demand down here and the volume tells us that was the case so we should find reasonable demand here so the market can only dip and perhaps we get a retest but we continued higher but why do we not want to be trading long at these kind of prices we already know the answer to this because if we are trading long here we are trading at what we call a value high which is the highest point of value which is essentially and we're bordering now on unfair pricing right so the only people who should want to be involved here are people who want to sell in this case if you are buying after the stop hunt then you will be a seller here so you should put sell pressure on the market by the, all of your dumping activity of course they're going to be people who are going to want to buy up there Right, and that's most people right because they've watched the move it looks intense they think we're gonna get a breakout all of these guys you've been listening to are either selling you breakout type strategies or systems that we know don't work right 
and that's where you're going to be looking to pay now granted this market did go up a little bit but think about the person here guys how much money did they make and look where you are and how much money are you gonna make virtually nothing if anything if you don't get caught up in the fear and the volatility that you're paying a higher price so what should you be doing here as we grind into new liquidity what we're looking for is a descent back in to what we can describe as fair prices the moment we see that we want to start to position we position a sell right so again we're selling because we can see that the liquidity was taken out and we're back in a fair prices so now we just want to sell at the most efficient price so as long as we're selling anywhere between 133.22 we're going to make money through value to take out the next liquidity right so we know the stops are going to sit under 130.97 and that's where we want to be able to get involved and trade to again right so it's important to take note of where the stops are going to be at these liquidity highs now that's the true art of swing trading right and we can do this on a weekly time frame we don't necessarily have to do this see, see it doesn't matter what time frame you're on right you can add up how long it took for you to make that trade or how long you had to sit in it but also how much money you made so again if you're able to have the leverage right so if you want to lever into this then you're going to do pretty well so for people who manage a lot of funds and big money they can really take advantage of these time frames right so that's an example there of i've used a weekly chart to demonstrate that because it's really clear but again we can do the same thing within sort of the intraday window right so again if you look at it, it's the exact same model it doesn't really change so again if you are looking to hold for a couple of days three maybe three to five days a week then you want to be paying attention to this frame so again what are we looking at we can see where the liquidity is and we can see the amount of times that the market has revisited liquidity and traded back and forth but ultimately if we expand out our horizon and think well this is just an in-depth look of a weekly chart Right, it's just spread it out a little bit then we can see the more efficient liquidity prices right so we can see that one under 126 handle was liquidity and that would have taken us here and then we are going to be looking for liquidity trade up here right we can see the longer term trend definitely has a bullish tinge to it and we can see that with the way the market is traded so even though it's a, it's a little bit stunted what we can now expect is that where are we going to revisit liquidity again so again if we're looking at that 126.58 is a good level this is all liquidity so if we tear under and recover then we want to be long so we don't have to second guess anything you can see that we've taken short-term liquidity over the chicago highs yesterday and in europe london open we've traded back in value and that means the market's going to go short right so let's open this up a bit right so we can see that liquidity high here we got confirmation the moment we were back within value and then we're trading so we know the liquidity lows going into a new york session it's very early could take us as low as here but we don't want to do anything we don't want to chase this if you weren't short on the break into 127.30 then you just want to be patient because you're not a european trader you haven't traded the european open why on earth would you be trading at near 11 o'clock in the morning right that's that's just flow the market is flowing in the direction it tends right if you get short here you're getting short within fair value right you can see where the liquidity is why are you getting short in the middle of liquidity no one's going to do that so what are we looking at now um so like i said you want to see where we go and how we trade into a major session like the new york session or the chicago session i take you get my point here so this is what we talk about when we say we swing trade right it's not always just about you know taking a longer term trade and holding it and that classifies a swing trade we have to be swinging off the liquidity anyway guys to my next video adios hey listen i, I quit yeah i'm going in the stocks name of the game move the money from your client's pocket into your pocket
But if you can make your clients money at the same time, it's advantageous to everyone, correct? No. No one is paying attention. It's unbelievable. You have to act now. God, this is intimate. I feel like I'm financially inside of you or something. Okay. I have five houses. Anaconda. I'm considering going long on April week. What do you think, Valentine? <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.